Hello, we're about to start a test of these A123 20 amp hour prismatic pouch cells. You can see I have one hooked up here to a CBA3. And I'm going to run this at 10 amps. But in parallel to that, you can see I have these two jumper cables set onto the tabs. Uh, they're hooked up there with some aluminum clamps and they're sitting here ready to go and instead of the load that I've checked them on before I'm going to just dead short them. I've done some tests and I have an idea what the resistance is in these cables and I'm predicting it should be somewhere over 200 amps draw. Uh, I may try similar tests with some of the others. You see I got a stack of these cells and a couple more stacks of these cells that I'm going to try to build some batteries with. And if everything goes according to plan, we should see in just a second uh, what's going to happen here. So let me go ahead and I don't know if you can see that computer screen, but I'm about to start the CBA3 running the test at 10 amps. hear the CBA3 firing up. And it's beginning to draw a nice steady, uh, let's see, 3.29 volts, so it's barely sagging. This uh, is a 20 amp hour capacity battery and now comes the big test. Uh, I'm just going to take these cables and you might not be able to see this when I do it but I'm just going to clamp one to the other. doesn't seem to be doing much. There you go, I think I got some current draw. Okay, they're dead shorted now. You can see the line. And it has dropped down to, right now, 2.89 volts. So, uh, we'll check the capacity of this. I'm holding the cables in my hand to feel for if they get too hot, I might have to stop the test. And let's watch this. Still holding 2.87. We would expect for a dead short test like this to have some voltage sag in these cells, but I have to say it's holding very close to 3, three volts, which is pretty good. Uh, when we're done, we'll calculate the amps and I'll write that down somewhere and post it with the video. Still holding 2.87 volts, nice flat discharge curve. Uh, we're at, we started the test at 1.1 minutes and we're just going to watch this graph go for a couple of minutes. I would expect it's going to last no more than a couple of minutes at this current. Let's see it. Say we're getting 200 amps like we think we're getting. Then it should actually it could go as long as 10 minutes. So I may have to end this before that, but I just want everybody to see that these cells can handle a dead short. And if you don't believe me, there's the jumper cables hooked up right to each other and coming right off the tabs of that battery. And don't forget the CBA3 is drawing 10 amps itself. Now I'm starting to feel the wires get a little bit warm. So probably what I'm going to do is uh, before I start generating smoke in my house and have to get the fire extinguisher, I'm just going to go ahead and end the test. But look, one thing I want to see is actually <laughs> the voltage was at 2.87 before and it's actually gone up to 2.91 while this 
test is going on. So that may be due to the fact that uh, the cables are getting hot and generating a little bit more resistance and that's lowering the current. But pretty interesting test. I'm starting to smell some insulation now so I'm going to unhook these cables and we'll see what the rest of the test does. Okay, we're unhooked. Graph goes back to now we're on 3.17 volts and holding steady. So that held uh like I said, I estimated the resistance before and I expect that was somewhere over 200 amps it was pulling. They're rated at 600 amps and there's some tests you can see, uh, not by me, where they've done high current draws like that. But uh, I'd say all in all, these cells are pretty good at a very high 200 and plus amp load, which I shall calculate shortly. If, if I'm able to do that based on the resistance of the cables uh, that I estimated previously. Okay, that's going to end the test. We're back up at 3.21 volts and still nice and flat.